So this was not planned, but we have done some awesome segues today. So Cameron mentioned planning events, which is our next session. Um, so I would love to bring up Ryan and Kelly. Um, and we actually have a special guest who joined us who is going to speak on him in a little bit. So Alex Michelson can wave his hand. Some of you know him from Fox LA Anchor. Um, right, Fox LA? Yeah, okay, cool. New job. Um, but anyways, our, our primary panelists are Ryan Carley, who you guys have met, our co-chair, um, team member extraordinaire who planned events for his campaign, and Kelly Mazzanti, who was a candidate last year who had a lot of success with her events. So we will let them take it away. Hi. Good to see you all again. <coughs> oh, we got a, there's no coffee, so stay awake. I know lunch was good. It was fantastic. Um, I think, for me, one of the uh, most important things to think about when it comes to events is don't depend on them too much. Uh, my experience with Team Amanda Strong, or our experience as a team, was that we did a couple of events. They were great, had a lot of fun, got people out, but they didn't break the bank when it comes to like the fundraising that uh, Karen and Matt were just talking about can do uh, if you have that kind of access. Um, and the other important point to take away, so that's my two points, which I'll talk, we can talk more about, is start early in the planning of them, so you can kind of just knock the dominoes down as you go. We made a mistake and started planning an event uh, midway through the campaign for the very end, and it was a lot of stress, we couldn't find the space, couldn't get things donated, it was the end of the world. Uh, had we started like today or tomorrow for something that's going to happen in April or May, we would have just ticked the box in April and said, all right, there's an event, got it done. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I second that. And I think, you know, unless event planning is something that you love to do and it's just your forte and you can easily figure out the logistics and assemble people to take care of specific parts and pieces of it, um, then I would say run with events because, of course, they're fun. It's a great way to get people there. Um, but the best way to do events, if, if that seems like something that naturally will fit into your campaign, is to utilize things that have pre-existing infrastructure or pre-existing crowds of people. So your favorite happy hour spot that you, you know is going to be packed out every Tuesday. You know, Cinco de Mayo, right, is in May. That's during the campaign. If you have a place that every, everybody likes to go and hang out, Talk to them now and ask them to commit like 20% of whatever they make on that day in proceeds and then tell your friends to also come, but you know there's already going to be 100 plus people there and their money is going to go towards your campaign that, that evening. So anything like that where there's already a crowd and there's already people there making money, I would suggest personally that that turns into your event. And now is the time to negotiate with those people and say, look, I'm going to run this campaign would you be willing to you know, donate proceeds for a certain time period to my event and we'll bring an extra crowd, um, we'll bring you extra traffic at a time that may be like a slower time of the week or the night for you. Um, so that goes with things, it was already said earlier, comedy, uh, people who might play music, you know, um, friends of yours who are maybe doing something where there's, I don't know, what's like another type of entertainment, music. Drag queen bingo. Drag queen bingo, yeah. Or if you have, you know, some parents who play bingo. <laughs> See if you can get in on that. But, um, you know, sometimes there's other ways to do things than just kind of make it up from scratch. And especially if it's going to require you paying to bring in people or infrastructure or food, <clears throat> think twice about it unless you're pretty for sure going to be able to get those things paid for or donated by a donor. But then, if you're gonna get that paid for, the other thing to think about is that donor could donate the money it's gonna take for that as dollars towards your campaign instead. So, just food for thought. And consider, consider the audience that's gonna to go to an event. So, um, use the network that exists amongst your team and it's, it's uh, quality over quantity. So you're gonna have, uh, you don't wanna be inviting every, my one, I'm not going to invite Kelly to every single event. She's going to be like, dude, seriously, I've already been to the last three you had a long ago. So spread the wealth in your network and also uh, target people. Bring people, if, if you do an event, look at who you're inviting and think, can I convert this person coming to this event to a charity buzz item that they may have access to, a larger donation, um, some other way to, that they can contribute to your campaign. 
One last thing I thought of, if any of you have birthdays coming up, you know there are some people in this room who are just selfless and they don't want to get presents. So I think a great opportunity for that is to tell your friends, come to this birthday party I'm throwing for myself. And instead of you know spending money on bringing me a bottle of my favorite bourbon, just donate to my campaign. So you know some people can capitalize on things that they would otherwise throw for themselves or family members and just turn it into, in lieu of presents, why don't you just give your money towards this? So I think that's a great way to have fun with it and get your friends to be there too. Any questions, guys? Huh? Alex. Alex. Who? Alex. You want to come? Oh, come on up. We have an extra chair for you. Right. <laughs> you can slide in if you like. Yeah, you can put it over there and then come on in. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, Lauren asked me to talk about an event that I threw, uh, which was a poker night, which went really well uh, for a variety of reasons. I uh, agree with you that as I, I threw some events that it put so much time and effort into it, and then you barely get any money out of it. So it's important to think about the crowd that you're bringing. I was fortunate. I was working at ABC at the time, and a colleague named Kurt Sandoval, who we were helping to do this with, who one of his best friends had used to run poker leagues, uh, so he had a built-in audience of poker players. And the good thing about poker players, or for people that are like that, is they're used to throwing down a lot of money, and they're used to losing a lot of money, right? Um, sometimes if you do an event, even when you're surrounded by a bunch of rich people, a lot of times rich people are really freaking cheap. That's how they got to be so rich, <laughs> right? So <laughs> sometimes people that give the most and the people that don't even have the most, people that are super rich will just sort of sit on their hands and not do that much. So the poker tournament was good because people are used to sort of throwing down money. So think about the kind of people that you want to invite that are like that. Uh, people are used to, to gambling. And then we did lots of things throughout the night to make it, to make more money. Like when they came in, it was like for an extra uh, 25 or 50 bucks you get you know a, an extra 10,000 chips so then who's not going to do that at the beginning if you already put the money in so then then we're making more money off of that we had an auction items there that we did a live auction when they're used to spending so we got money there we had items because Kurt did sports works for the you know and, and all the different sports teams that donated stuff and then we auctioned that stuff off and then this is a key thing and I don't know if anybody's talked about this before um, but corporate matching funds are really, really key. So, especially for events, if you can do this, and this was like one of the best things for my campaign in terms of making good money. So I think that night we made thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars in a night with the poker tournament. But what we did, because it was all came basically in cash in one thing, we decided, okay, well, who on our team works for a company that does matching funds, and we'll have them donate it. Um, even we split it up a little bit, so then, then that you know, thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars became twenty-six thousand um, dollars. So that's a lot of money that you could, you know, that you can take that way. So it's a really great idea if you do have an event to see if, if somebody in your orbit, and most likely somebody will, and um, even if you convince them, it's a it's a super easy ask for them. Like donate this. It's not going to cost you any money and you're gonna get a great tax uh, rebate for it. <laughs> so it's a, it's a nice thing to do. Um, and, then it, and that sort of event is totally worth it, whereas other ones may be fun and maybe a great way to bring your team together, get people excited, but um, as, as she mentioned, um, it might be better to just ask them to donate the money. I'm gonna put my rules and regulations hat on real quick. Please do not tell your LLS staff person if you would like to work on the event matching scenario. We'll leave it at that. It's technically, that is something on the, the donor. It's not best practices to do that. It is something that is very, very, very common, commonly done. It's just not something that the LLS can partner with you to do. And these are the views of all the panelists, so not- Exactly. <laughs> Again, I am not saying it is not incredibly common and has been proven to be a good fundraising outlet. I'm just saying please, the LLS staff cannot help you do that. But if you're going to do it, start asking now. <laughs> <laughs> Again, and we're going to put on our earmuffs and walk in the corner. <laughs> uh, one thing I was thinking about um, with the planning of an event as a candidate, unless you love planning events, then for sure go for it. Delegate that to a team member. Pick someone who you can say, okay, let's say you're going to do two events. Have a team member do this one and have a team member do that one. 
That way, it's something you can lock in the box, give it to them, and know that it's just gonna, they're going to make it happen. One less thing for you to be worrying about. Any questions we can entertain in the remaining minutes? Or any more rules we can break or whatever? <laughs> Anybody thinking of events? Cool. If any of you have ideas about events that you want to noodle around, you know, we're all happy. Every, us three up here, but other people have run campaigns in the past can help you kind of play with your idea and figure out how to maximize, you know, what you're thinking about doing. And maybe pair you with people who are interested in helping you. I've got a golf tournament and drag queen bingo, so if anybody has questions, I'm going to add. Yeah, somebody can drag queen bingo, because I haven't been yet, and I'll totally come. I'll come here again. What other ideas? Come on. Yeah, have you guys, or has anybody done, I know it's been mentioned, but a comedy show, like I recently, by just posting on Facebook, the fact that I'm doing this, uh, a buddy of mine who's a really well-known comic, um, I found out that his mom had passed away to leukemia back in 2012, and so he's fully on board. Uh, so I was just wondering if anybody's done a comedy show. Uh, I know that he has connections at the Laugh, or no, the Comedy Store? Uh, or I'm sorry, Laugh Factory. Laugh Factory. Uh, if anybody's done it, some logistical issues that they discovered, or things that they learned, uh, some things to know. If anybody has any information like So that. I did a comedy show. Um, and uh, and because my aunt's involved in the comedy world and she put it on and put so much work into it and, and it was a super, super fun night and we had a blast and I, I think Adam Sussman did a comedy show during his campaign too. Um, the, the challenge with a comedy show is, in all honesty, you can't make that much money doing it. So it's one of those things that gets everybody riled up. It's a great moment to bring everybody together but um, it's not a huge money maker, unless you're super overcharging on ticket prices and then you're probably not gonna get that many people there. What about if you can broadcast it somehow like on Facebook Live or on Instagram Live where you have like a link to your mm -hmm. page? Is that something that could be doable as well? Like if you were able to broadcast it across like all platforms with like some of these comics following. I think you'd have to check in with the place and then different comics sometimes, in different places have different rules. Sometimes they don't like stuff to be broadcast. Right. Because like the whole Michael Richards thing years ago and stuff and they oh. banned that kind of thing. Right. Some places where you're not allowed to film and um, some places might encourage it if you've got, if you've got the room. But and sometimes people have weird rules with that. Okay. Yeah, and I was gonna say, one of our candidates from last year attempted to utilize that type of platform. She's not here right now because she's out of the country, but when she gets back, we can totally chat and connect. Okay. And, what, and one more thing with that, just a quick thing. So if you are gonna try to do something like that, that's a great example of things you could do at scale. Like if you have team members in other states, you could all decide, hey, let's hit up the comedy clubs in our area and ask for the month of May or whatever, maybe it's one Sunday a month during the campaign. Let's get the commitment today that they will donate X percent of their ticket sales to our campaign. That will be like their charity night. So then nobody has to be there. Nobody has to be taking their time or spending their money being there, but it's just like ancillary. It's happening while you're also running your campaign and doing charity buzz stuff and personal donations. So I think it's a great example to bring up while these shows are already happening, just get commitments that they'll donate a percentage of the proceeds. Yeah, because that was our challenge in doing it was that we felt we, we had to, because we got basically rented the space, we had to fill the room ourselves. Right. And that, and usually the only nights that they're going to do that is in the middle of the week. Right. And it sometimes can be hard to convince people to, to come out. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I